Let's talk a little bit about breast cancer, given the, how common it is. How long after surgery can you begin radiation? Wound healing, we give them a little bit of time. We generally do our CT-based simulation and three-dimensional planning maybe three, two to three weeks after their, their surgery. And then by the time, it takes about a week to do all of our computer programming, and then we'll uh, start the treatment within three to four weeks post-op. So tell me a little bit about that. I was completely unaware of that. So I'm a woman, I've had a, a lumpectomy. Sentinel node was negative. So I've got an incision about this long for right. the listener, you know, five centimeter, six centimeter incision. When right. I come and see you, how many weeks after that? I usually will see patients for consultation. A lot of times the breast surgeon will send them prior to anything being done. So I'll see them for their initial consultation ahead of time. But then we plan on doing what's called a, a planning procedure or a simulation where we're going to put the patient on the table and essentially do a dry run for their treatment, usually a couple of weeks after treatment. And that involves essentially positioning the patient, typically for a, a breast patient, they'll be prone with their arm behind their head. We call it the, the movie star pose okay. to get the arm out of the way of the axilla, essentially. Okay. And so by putting them in this position and then putting them on a wing board that will slightly elevate their torso, we can, and there's a lot of different geometry here that we can use. Uh, back in the old days, they had all kinds of ways of doing plaster casts and things like that. But we essentially do now is we will uh, we'll use a, a what we call a vac lock, essentially a bean bag with a vacuum port. And they, the patient sinks into the bag. We suck all the air out of it and lock it. It becomes a rigid cast of their body. And that way they fit into the groove that we've made for them. We'll actually f we'll kind of uh, form it and mold it around their elbow so they're comfortable. Many times with patients who've had an axillary dissection, they may have a little bit of uh, scarring, a little decreased range of motion to be able to get their elbow back there. So we'll work with them the best we can. Whatever position we get them in, we do a CT in that position. And that's the position we have to reproduce for the daily. How long does each session take? When they're actually on treatment, it's about 15 minutes, sometimes even a little bit less than that. Some of the newer machines can deliver the beam even faster. But when I say 15 minutes, I'm talking about I have four patients an hour typically, so in and out of the room in 15. So that includes getting them on the table. The key thing for accuracy and reproducibility is positioning. So the reason we made that mold and we've not only did we get them in position, but I've also got a couple of dots on their skin to use as reference marks to make sure that the patient is, is uh, in, the, in the correct position. Uh, that that whole process probably takes five minutes every day when the patient gets in the room, and then maybe another five to 10 minutes for the actual beam to be on. And my favorite thing is to come in the room after the patient's first treatment, and then the most common question I get is, hey, doc, when do we start? And I'm like, no, ma'am, that was... They're like, really? That was it? Because they, the patient feels nothing. So the machine will go through its various angles. It's pre-programmed. The entire process is about 15 minutes a day, and they can leave feeling the same as when they got there, just like getting any x-ray. They jump in their car and go right back to work or to, to the gym or the golf course. What are the typical side effects that a woman experiences from this tra treatment? Sure. And by the way, was she typically getting 40 gray 25 years ago, or was that a little more, I think you said, and now they've come down a bit, it was sort of 50, 60 gray? This brings up a point I need to kind of emphasize. It's not so much the total dose, it's the dose per fraction. So how quickly are you getting it? So the standard of care was actually 50 gray rather than today's 40-ish gray, but it used to be given in two gray per fraction da daily doses rather than the 2.6, 2.7 that we're using now. But with the modern treatment now with, uh, first, first of all, not using cobalt, using linear accelerators, the energy of the photons is higher, which means the skin dose is slightly lower. So you're getting maybe 100% on the skin rather than 150% like you once did. So we don't see anywhere near the skin reaction <clears throat> that we used to. It's more of a, you know, maybe a grade one or a grade two erythema. So mild redness or maybe sometimes a little bit of, you know, like it's a sunburn, but nothing as severe as we used to. So these days, patients do still get a sunburn. We give them a little, uh, some free samples of aquaphor or uh, they can use an aloe vera plant if they have it, just, you know, your normal type of skincare stuff, as opposed to the old days when we were actually treating essentially burn victims with silver sulfadiazine and heavy duty narcotics and things like that. <laughs> the modern era, it's so much better that a lot of the patients, especially if it's someone that doesn't have a very large breast, there's less energy being put into a smaller size person. Uh, they don't get anywhere near the skin reaction. And that's why if you did have a very large patient, we actually still use the old 50 gray in 25 because you're giving less dose per day. And when you do have a very large breast where you're going to have areas that are going to have hot and cold spots, sometimes that's still needed. So we have to tailor it to the individual is, is I guess, my bottom line there. What is the impact of breast implants in this type of treatment, either saline implants or uh, the older 
uh, impl- actually, they're not older now. They're back in vogue, back right? Back in vogue, yeah, right? Of the course. silicone, silicone implants. Either way, what we can so the, the photons, the, the X rays we use, they are, they are not at all affected by that. That's essentially tissue equivalent. And I, my, pardon my ignorance, I completely mm-hmm. forget. Are those mm-hmm. implants typically under the pec or between the pec and the breast? So we see both. Okay. You know, it's interesting how there's, uh, I guess, uh, sub. What's the current standard? I'm not sure what the current. I think most of them we see are actually under the muscle. That's okay. I, I don't know. I've actually seen both silicone even recently. Under pec? Mm-hmm. But I've seen them both. Even I even think even now the plastic surgeons have different uh, criteria for that. But regardless of what it is, our whole, if it's under the pec, then of course it's really a little farther away. It's not not a huge issue, but we still, the radiation will still affect that area. But typically these these implants are pretty pretty tolerant of that. The only issue down the road is they may have a capsular contracture or something from fibrosis. The bigger challenge we run into is for our post-mastectomy patients who are going to be reconstructed and they have expanders put in. And that's where the relationship between the radiation oncologist, the surgeon, and the plastic surgeon is key. Do women experience any systemic symptoms from radiation like nausea or vomiting, or is that um, Not much, at all. Yeah. The only time we see radiation patients who have nausea or vomiting, it's typically, it's a lot of times for, for other sites, they may get concurrent chemo radiation where the chemo could be responsible. Mm-hmm. But for ra- for breasts, we don't do concurrent. It's usually sequential. The only time I really see radiation-induced nausea is if I'm treating an esophagus or a pancreas or something that's in the, it's treating in the, in the abdomen or somewhere along the GI tract where nausea is more of an issue typically not for breast. 